Welcome to Episode 7 of Truth and Consequences with Doug Papa. According to a document recently filed with the United States District Court for the District of Nevada, Jamal Rashid, also known as Molly Mall, the hip-hop music producer and longtime Nevada-based sex trafficker, has been hospitalized in California with complications arising from the COVID-19 virus. According to the stipulation and order to continue the sentencing date for Rashid that was filed by his attorneys David Chesnoff and Richard Schoenfeld, and agreed to by United States Attorney for the District of Nevada, Nicholas Trutanich, that the sentencing date currently scheduled for July 31, 2020 at 10 o'clock a.m. be vacated and continued to Friday, October 2, 2020, or a Friday date thereafter. The stipulation was ordered for the following reasons. The defendant was admitted to the UCLA Medical Center Hospital on or about July 13, 2020, and was diagnosed with COVID-19 with impact to his lungs. It is, in, it is uncertain when Mr. Rashid will recover and there will be a quarantine period thereafter. The order was signed on July 16, 2020 by United States District Court Judge Gloria M. Navarro. I reported on October 22, 2019 that Jamal Rashid, a.k.a. Molly Mall's 12-year reign as a Las Vegas pimp had come to an end. At that time, the U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of Nevada released the following statement, quote, Hip-hop producer Jamal Rashid, commonly known as Molly Mall, pleaded guilty today in federal court to unlawfully owning and operating a prostitution business disguised as escort businesses, said U.S. Attorney Nicholas A. Trutanich for the District of Nevada. Rashid, 44, pleaded guilty to one count of use of an interstate facility in aid of unlawful activity. U.S. District Court Judge Richard F. Balwer II accepted the guilty plea and scheduled a sentencing hearing for January 21, 2020. According to the information contained in the plea agreement, between April 2002 and September 2014, Rashid owned, operated, and managed several businesses in Clark County, Nevada that purported to offer legal escort services. Rashid admitted that he carried on an unlawful prostitution business through these escort businesses. He routinely used or caused others to use cell phones and other means to cause women who worked at his escort business to conduct acts of prostitution in Clark County. In some instances, Rashid's credit card was used to pay for the airfare and other travel-related expenses, and he used various paid websites, such as Backpage and Eros, to advertise the women for prostitution purposes. Furthermore, Rashid induced and enticed numerous women to engage in prostitution. The case was investigated by the FBI. Assistant U.S. Attorney Nicholas Dickinson is prosecuting the case. Las Vegas KLS-TV 8 News Now I team reported last year that the U.S. Attorney's Office sent them the following statement. Quote, In the course of investigating Mr. Rashid, the U.S. Attorney's Office, in partnership with the FBI, did examine and developed information regarding allegations of related wrongdoing that generally have been the subject of media coverage. Following an extensive inquiry, we concluded that there was not sufficient evidence to support any additional charges relating to Mr. Rashid, his associates, or others, and therefore closed the investigation, unquote. Needless to say, this whole thing smelled of impropriety to me. Rashid was engaging in a 12-year criminal enterprise, the sex trafficking of adults, yet the U.S. attorney gives him a plea deal for one count of use of an interstate facility in aid of unlawful activity. The government didn't go for a sex trafficking charge, and U.S. attorney Trutanich has the gall to make statements about how serious he takes human trafficking in Nevada. Engaging in sex trafficking and interstate transportation for prostitution are violations of Title 18 of the U.S. Code, and Rashid got off with a simple plea deal for a single charge. The case is closed, according to U.S. Attorney for the District of Nevada, Nicholas Trutanich. Why the plea deal, Mr. Trutanich? Rashid obviously gave you nothing in return. So, U.S. Attorney Trutanich, Rashid wasn't paying off Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department vice detectives as was alleged in sworn statements given under the penalty of perjury that were obtained by attorneys for then-convicted pimp Ocean Fleming that won Fleming an appeal and a release date in January 2020. 
when Rashid's bodyguard said he observed payments from Rashid to LVMPD police officers to target rival pimps on behalf of Rashid, was he lying, Mr. Trutanich? Was there no coercing of witnesses in criminal cases against pimps who Rashid's competition by Clark County Chief Deputy District Attorney Elizabeth Mercer, as was alleged in those court documents? Were detectives not sleeping with prostitutes? Did Rashid tell the FBI that he wasn't paying off cops, as was alleged? If there was nothing that the FBI couldn't uncover after a five-year corruption probe of the Las Vegas Metro Police Department, then I would have to ask not only you, Mr. Trutanich, but also Clark County District Attorney Steve Wolfson, why the hell were violent pimps given sweetheart deals over the years that put them back on the street since those cases all had involvement with the same prosecutor and detectives who were allegedly corrupt. When Sheriff Joe Lombardo hired attorneys to prevent the testimony in court of a cop, who by the admission of that same attorney who was hired by Lombardo, in court stated she knew that this cop's testimony would implicate other corrupt cops. I guess there was nothing to that also, Mr. Trutanich. Doesn't that all fall under public corruption and a lack of public integrity? The federal investigation started prior to the FBI raiding Rashid's Las Vegas home and escort businesses in September of 2014. The five-year federal investigation resulted in only one single charge, and a plea deal was taken for that. I wanted to read the federal grand jury indictment if I could ever have gotten a hold of it, because I thought it may have made some very interesting reading. But alas... There never was a grand jury indictment against Rashid, as I will explain shortly. This case does not pass the smell test with me. I'm not buying it by a long shot, but then again, what can you expect from the Federal Bureau of Investigation, an organization that, according to published reports, has become politicized over the years and whom the word integrity apparently was taking out of their motto, Fidelity, Bravery, Integrity, a very long time ago, by the Bureau's hierarchy. To Special Agent in Charge Aaron Rouse of the FBI Las Vegas Division, when Las Vegas Justice Court Judge Melanie Andrus Tobiason told me in my on-the-record recorded interview with her in May of 2018 that FBI Special Agent Kevin White, who was investigating police corruption, told her that then Las Vegas Metro Police Assistant Sheriff Todd Fasulo called his boss at the time your then number two man at the Las Vegas division, Patrick Brodsky, and had Special Agent White pulled from talking to Judge Tobias in any further, was that true, Mr. Rouse, or is Judge Tobias in not telling the truth about that? Because if it was, it sure sounds like one major public integrity investigation against the FBI. If true, though, who would investigate that? The Department of Justice Inspector General's office? Jamal Rashid, a.k.a. Molly Mall, waived his right to prosecution by indictment and consented to prosecution by criminal information, according to the court documents that I obtained last year. On September 25, 2019, U.S. Attorney Trutanich charged himself with Rashid with one count of use of an interstate facility in aid of unlawful activity, stating that from on or about April 2002, through in or about October of 2014 in the District of Nevada and elsewhere, Rashid used facilities of interstate commerce with the intent to promote, manage, establish, carry on, and facilitate the promotion, management, establishment, and carrying on of an unlawful activity, that is, a business enterprise involving adult prostitution. Rashid gave up his right to indictment by grand jury and accepted a plea deal to the one-count criminal information on September 12, 2019. On October 21, 2019, the court accepted the, the guilty plea, and the matter was referred to the probation department for a pre-sentence investigation and report. Rashid has been on a personal recognizance bond pending his sentencing and disposition that was set for January 21, 2020 at 2 o'clock p.m. in Las Vegas in U.S. District Court. That sentencing date was later postponed because of the COVID-19 virus. According to the plea agreement, the government and Rashid stipulated that a sentence of no lower than one month of imprisonment and no greater than 33 months of imprisonment and a supervised release term of three years 
was appropriate in the case. U.S. Attorney Trutanich, I would sure like to know if the women who were victimized and used by pimp Jamal Rashid as prostitutes think that his plea deal was appropriate. Did those female victims of human trafficking have any input into your bullshit plea deal you gave to pimp Molly Mall? Rashid admitted under penalty of perjury last year that the following facts were true and correct. That between in or about April of 2002 and in or about September of 2014, he operated, owned, and managed several businesses in Clark County, Nevada that purported to offer legal escort services. Those businesses included VIP Entertainment LLC, International VIP LLC, and Las Vegas Concierge VS1 LLC, and that Rashid carried on an unlawful prostitution business through these escort businesses. Between in or about April 2002, and in or about September of 2014, Rashid routinely used or caused others to use the following described facilities in interstate commerce to promote, manage, establish, and carry on his unlawful prostitution business, cellular telephones, and other means to cause women working for his escort businesses to conduct acts of prostitution in Claw County, Nevada. In some instances, Rashid's American Express credit card was used to pay for the airfare and other travel-related expenses. Rashid used or caused others to use various paid websites, such as Backpage and Eros Guide, to advertise the women online for prostitution purposes. For example, on September 11, 2014, Rashid paid Eros Guide $2,772 using his, Amer excuse me, his American Express credit card. Between in or about April 2002 and in or about September of 2014, Rashid performed numerous acts in furtherance of his prostitution business in Nevada and elsewhere. Most notably, Rashid persuaded, induced, enticed, and caused numerous women to engage in prostitution, such as the following examples. In March 2012, Rashid persuaded, induced, enticed, and caused victim one to travel from Nevada to New York to engage in prostitution. On February 15, 2008, victim two to travel from Las Vegas to Maui, Hawaii. On March 6, 2008, victim three to travel from Portland, Oregon to Las Vegas. On January 19, 2009, victim four to travel from Las Vegas to Chicago, Illinois. On March 26, 2010, victim five to travel from Las Vegas to New York City. On July 27, 2011, victim six to travel from Las Vegas to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And on March 11, 2013, victim seven to travel from Las Vegas to Newark, New Jersey. Those were just a few examples that were mentioned in the plea agreement by United States Attorney Nicholas Trutanich. There were many more victims. We may never know just how far Rashid's continuing criminal enterprise stretched across the country. Like I said, everything stinks about this entire case. Why did U.S. Attorney Trutanich give Rashid a sweetheart plea deal of only one count for a 12-year continuing criminal enterprise in sex trafficking and how could a multi-million dollar five-year-plus investigation by the FBI net no Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department police officers who were accused of being paid off by Rashid to go after Rashid's rival pimps? I found no mention in any of the court documents as to how much illegal income Rashid netted from being a pimp. It doesn't appear from reading the plea agreement that the government will seize Rashid's assets obtained from his illegal activities. For the length of time that Rashid was operating, I am dismayed as to why the government offered him a plea deal before a grand jury handed down indictments. Or maybe a better question should be, was a grand jury ever convened? What, if anything, did the government get from Rashid to offer him such a good deal? Since nobody else was charged, and U.S. Attorney Trutanich said the case is closed, this is more than puzzling. It would be interesting to know who were the clients of the prostitutes that Rashid was sending all over the country. 
Were they celebrities, politicians, judges, prosecutors, cops, FBI agents? And how come none of them were charged? The Johns were certainly not some meth addicts hanging on street corners across the country. And closer to home, who were the Johns slash clients of the Las Vegas prostitutes who were working for Rashid? To those of us looking from the outside in, it appears that the FBI Las Vegas Division and the United States Attorney's Office, headed by Nicholas Trutanich, didn't want to open a can of worms. I'm not going to send any get-well cards to pimp Jamal Rashid, a.k.a. Molly Mall, but I do hope he recovers because the cop that's still inside of me wants him to see the inside of a prison cell, even though his incarceration time stipulated should be much greater. And to U.S. Attorney Nicholas Trutanich, I say this to you. I don't want to hear another speech from you telling the public how much you care about human trafficking in Nevada until you explain to the community how this criminal investigation turned out to be a disgraceful blemish on the face of the FBI Las Vegas Division and your office. Coming soon on Truth and Consequences with Doug Papa, new information that puts into question the veracity of Las Vegas Justice Court Judge Melanie Andrus Tobiasen. Thank you for listening.